Hello there, thanks for coming by. This is Pete Howard of PosterCentral.com and I'm holding today a beautiful, gorgeous, look at these Dayglow colors, look at this masterpiece, a Motortown Review poster from 1965. Now in all of poster collecting, pop music, rock music, soul, rhythm and blues, um, baby boomer concert poster collecting, Motortown Review posters are among the most coveted. They're just because we all know the music so well, right? They're part of our DNA, all these songs and everything. So, and they usually were done quite beautifully like this. So this is a perfect example, just really sweet. The first day of summer in 1965. I hope you had a good summer of 65 and remember this music because it really shaped the soundtrack of our lives, didn't it? And this poster, once again made by Globe Poster out of Baltimore, Maryland, is just a beautiful, beautiful design of just great, you know, colors, and nice cardboard, you know, window card. This one was obviously not used because it's in beautiful shape. And uh, Globe just really knocked them out beautifully. Now, this is a tour blank, which means that part of Memorial Auditorium up there at June 21 was stripped in just for this show. And uh, I've not seen it from another city. Most of these tour blanks I show you, I have pictures from several other cities, but not in this case. So I'm really curious to know if anybody's seen it from another city. If you could just, you know, let me know, that'd be really terrific. So. Okay, so taking on the artist right there, front, center, dominant, top row, everything, Marvin Gaye. Wow, one of the five most important artists ever to come out of Motown, I suppose. He was riding the crest right now, first day of summer of 65, really happy to be celebrating his first ever number one record. I'll Be Doggone had just peaked at the top of the R&B charts. Now, it wouldn't be long, however, before Marvin made serious impact on the pop charts as well, because most... Motortown, Motown stars crossed over and did that, and Marvin uh, had seven in the national top 20 so far. Um, so he just hadn't quite, uh, you know, hadn't quite hit the charts. But seven top 20 hits is nothing, certainly, to um, to sniff at, I guess you could say. And I don't know if you can quite make them out, but there's four nice titles on this poster above his name, and that's "I'll Be Dog On," "How Sweet It Is to Be Loved by You," "Hitchhike." and Pride and Joy. So it's always great to see just beautiful song titles on, you know, on a concert poster. The, the width of the poster is also taken up by Martha and the Vandellas, right below Marva, uh, right below Marvin, I should say. <laughs> and they're coming off their top ten hit, Nowhere to Run, which is mentioned on the poster, so that's pretty cool. Dancing in the Street had been a Motown national anthem the year before in 1964, and they add an S to Street to, to name it Streets for this poster, but it's Dancing in the Street. And then look at that graphic for Junior Walker and the All-Stars. Isn't that like out of sight, to use a, a 60s term? Just a great graphic, just really something. Um, Shotgun was their first hit, and a top five pop hit in the nation. And uh, it's great that that's the one that's on the poster and drove the graphic, obviously, being inside the body there of a shotgun. Junior Walker, though, and his All-Stars turned out to be much better performers on the R&B charts and Shotgun was actually the first of 18 straight top 40 R&B hits. Just amazing. Then we have Brenda Holloway there, and a nice picture of Brenda. And um, she was, uh, this, this is really neat, this June 21st, 1965. Happy birthday, Brenda. She turned 19 on this exact day. And she was born in Atascadero, California, which is not far from where I live. So I thought I'd give it a little plug for hometown flavor there. And it's neat because her two biggest hits are on the poster, Every Little Bit Hurts and When I'm Gone. In fact, one trait of this, this poster is that really smart song selection choices all the way through. They didn't rely on recent stiffs or current stiffs to put on here. They put big hits, but I suppose the hit makers were so strong, their current ones were hits. By the way, Brenda Holiday, Brenda Holloway, a couple of months later, would step on stage at arguably the biggest rock concert in history. Yeah, I thought I'd pause there if you could think about it for a second. She was the first one on stage for the Beatles at Shea Stadium 1965, which could have sold out 10 or 100 times over. And uh, she actually joined the Beatles for the whole tour that summer, although the tour with the Beatles only consisted of two weeks, but still a wonderful feather in her cap just a few weeks after this particular show and this tour. Then we have the Contours right next to her and get their picture in there a little bit. And Do You Love Me, of course, is just a monster hit. Uh, it was three years, though, before this show, and they're only top 40 hits, so it's too bad the Contours 
could not duplicate their success. But it does say the song on the poster, which is really cool. And uh, then below that, Can You Jerk Like Me, the jerk being a popular dance of the day, was their current attempt and did sneak into the top 20 rhythm and blues-wise. By the way, Do You Love Me became a number 11 pop hit all over again 23 years later when the next generation discovered it in the Dirty Dancing movie. And then way down at the bottom, what's this? Why are they so hidden? Not Willie Tyler? Well, I'll go ahead. Sure, I'm there. Willie Tyler and Lester, the ven ventriloquist dummy act. <laughs> Quite a novelty. But what's this? Above Choker Campbell, the band leader, way down at the bottom, the four tops. Heavens, I guess they were just getting rolling. But the week before the show, they had the number one record in the country with I Can't Help Myself. You know, Sugar Pie Honey Bunch, right? which was also their first top ten record. But here for the poster's sake, which was designed a couple of months earlier, there's Baby I Need Your Lovin', also just a masterpiece, which uh, peaked at number 11, and Ask the Lonely, which was top ten rhythm and blues. So, whew, boy, what a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of history and a lot of hit music and a lot of gorgeous design on this masterpiece of a poster. Whew, boy, just love it. The Motortown Review, in person, 1965, first day of summer, Marvin Gaye headlining. I'm breathless. It's taken away. I hope you're the same way. I hope you enjoyed seeing this. Thanks a lot for coming by and sharing my enthusiasm, and we'll see you next time for something soon on this blog. So take care and have a nice day. Bye-bye.